great seeing you here again. My name is Luke de Custer, founder of the Custer Academy. And in this video, I will describe the activity on the arrow methods, which are the arrow diagramming method and the PERT method. But before we continue, don't forget to click on the subscribe button, click on the bell button, and every time we have a new video, YouTube will inform you about it. So let's have a look at the terminology related to the activity on the arrow methods. Now, when we want to understand the activity on the arrow precedence methods properly, you first need to get acquainted with the terminology. First of all, what is an activity? An activity is a task or work that is represented by an arrow from left to right. We always draw the diagram from left to right. The length of the arrow is not relevant to or related to the duration of the activity. So it just indicates that this is an activity from point A till point B, and this is the activity A with a duration of so many days or weeks. An event is a point in time. We also can refer to it like a milestone, but here we have milestones related to activities. Typically, we have milestones in a project which are more important events in the lifespan of the project. And the event uh, can indicate the start, and then we call it a tail event, or the finish, and then we call it a head event of an activity. So we have an activity going from a tail event to a head event. So it starts at the tail and finishes at the head. In activity on arrow, we also have what we call dummy activities. A dummy activity is an activity with duration zero. It's an imaginary activity. It's not existing. And it's only used to indicate a dependency relationship between two events. There are some limitations in the uh, activity on arrow technique, and it's only possible to introduce all the necessary dependencies when we are using dummy activities. And what is a network? Well, the network is the relational diagram representing the dependency relationship between these different activities. So when we put all the activities together, they have first uh, start or tail events and finish or head events, they are linked, they are following a certain precedence. When we put all of these elements together, then we find this relational diagram, which is the network diagram. Now, when we look at the activity on arrow methods, there are different ways to look at. We look at the different series of activities that must be completed before a follow-up activity can start. And in the activity on arrow methods, we have to take into account the following rules. First, every activity must have a tail and a head event. There is a start and a finish to ever, every activity. Tail and head events can be shared by multiple activities. Two events can only be joined by one activity. And here we have the need for a dummy activity because of the fact that we can only have one activity linking two events, we can in some cases not represent the correct dependency relationships. Now, networks should be organized in a progression, so they should go from left to right. There should not be any loops and there are no danglers. Danglers mean that there is an activity without an head event, and that is in fact not allowed. It should end in one final event, which is the end of the project. Now, when we look at the activity on, sorry, on the arrow diagramming method and the PERT, we see that both of them are part of the activity on node network family. Both methods use the same scheduling technique, the same method and calculation methods. The only difference between the two is the duration of the activities that are used. The arrow diagramming method uses fixed time durations, while the PERT uses a probabilistic approach to durations and includes the expected duration of the activity and a standard deviation for each activity and finally for the project 
to determine the project duration. We will look into some examples related to this. So this was a quick reminder of what the activity on Arrow network method is about, what are the terms that we have to understand, and what are the conditions that we have to follow when we are creating an activity on Arrow network. That was it for this video. Don't forget to click on the subscribe button, click on the bell button, and every time we have a new video, YouTube will inform you about it. Thank you very much, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in our next videos. Bye-bye.